Hey, welcome back to Evil's Comics. I'm Evil Mike, and I got a review for you. Actually, it's a part two to a review of Already Done. And of course, if you've seen the thumbnail, then you know this is part two to Action Comics number one, uh, the facsimile, of course, released in 1938. I'm going to touch base on all the other stories. This is for you, Ranger Sly. Ranger Sly asked me directly to, um, you know, review the other stories, which I should have the first time. But I kind of thought, you know, the origin story was the more important. It was to me, you know. Um, so here we go. There's a lot of stories in here. Some a lot better than the others. Um, I kind of touched based on the second story, which is Chuck Dawson. Um, it is written by H. Fleming. It is in black and white. It is tied to the coloring contest that they did back in the day. Um, there is another black and white story in here. I don't know if they... they you know just did that on purpose or but this story directly is tied to the coloring contest but Chuck Dawson is basically a revenge story um, it is about a cowboy that lost his ranch dude you know the gang came through and, and took it and basically he leaves and, and goes and learns jiu-jitsu and comes back and, and basically it's it's you know fist flying and kicks and throws and you know and it's basically you know Chuck Dawson getting his land back with jiu-jitsu which I thought was badass I've never I mean to me it was a dope brand new idea I mean we're talking about 1938 so that idea has been around forever and I mean no one's really used it I mean I've never really seen a TV show with the Western you know with the dude throwing punches I mean yeah you might say Texas Walker Ranger but it's not really set in this this fashion you know like Walker Texas Ranger was more modern um, Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is out there, and I just don't know about it. But Chuck Dawson was actually really, really good. The art, the story. Um, of course, it's a continuation. You'd have to read, you know, Action Comics 2 to find out what happens. Uh, maybe one day, right? So next up, we got Zatara Master Magician. It is by Fred Gardner. Um, another one of the good stories in the book. And I, I, I want to believe this is the origin of... Zatanna's dad maybe I mean I don't I think his name is Zatara but they don't I mean this is way before of course she would have been born but I just had to believe this is kind of because I do know a little bit about her dad and you know him being Dr. Fate and stuff like that but um, but anyways let's get back into this and I'll show you some similarity similarities as we go but it's basically about um, Zatara and he is a magician and it's a, about his friend Tong his assistant and then basically his arch enemy, the Tigress. Um, it's basically about a train robbery, and they're trying to catch this, this somebody who's been robbing these these um, <clears throat> different train cars. And of course, Tigress is behind it. She is right here. Um, but she basically is. I mean, no superpowers or anything like that. She's just you know, a a you know wealth you know intelligent villain that, that uses goons to do her bidding kind of thing but she's kind of part of it too um basically it's it's a you know kind of whodunit type of thing there there is a detective in the very beginning of the story that is helping Zatara and and Tong and basically he gets incriminated and the whole rest of the book is 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 Zatara trying to you know stop the bank robberies figure out who's doing that which they know it's Tigress but at the same time you know prove that his detective friend was not in on the take and that he was just um, and, and uh, this is actually a complete story now maybe Zatara finishes in each episode would be something different but as far as point A to B you got everything we got to find out you know who incriminated the you know his detective friend we you know Tigress of course robbing the banks um, real quick I will show you right here this is what I was talking about but he does use magic and when he uses magic it's in backwards speak like all his spells or like this spell for instance is really airy one in him yep and he's actually saying you are now in my power um, but he actually does that like four or five times during the story and that's kind of I mean the fact that he's a magician Zatara and I want to have without the knowledge I haven't looked this up so I mean maybe this is a known thing or maybe it's just something that they did and um, but it is quite a lengthy story I mean most of the bigger stories in the book are four or five pages long 
Another thing that I would like to point out, like this story specifically, you can kind of tell that it was written more for children or younger ages because the, the lettering and the wording is so big. They, they It's pretty quick, you know, as far as the words. It's not a whole bunch of, of big, enormous words, which is kind of funny because then you come to the next story. So the next story is called South Sea Strategy by Captain Frank Thomas. Um, and it's just a full-on book. I mean, it's just this one page, and it's just basically about, like, a a captain, and I think his, like, I don't know what he would call it, his first mate. But they, it's just about them, <clears throat> like, going out on the seas. He ends up finding a stranger, and, and they end up I don't know, getting, kind of getting shipwrecked with these, like, aborigine type of, you know, like, indigenous people that are, and they call them savages, but... But um, honestly, this is not one of the more, you know, like fun stories in the book. Honestly, it was a chore just to make it through this just really one page of, of story. Um, honestly, this much of, let's see if I can do it here, but this much of the, I mean, these two, that that's all descriptive. It took me that long to figure out what the hell the story was. It's all like, hey, the, the ocean and the wave and the moon night and the and the brilliant ribbons of red and blue shot and the void blint. You know, it's a it's it's a whole lot of descriptive. Now, don't get me wrong, I like my descriptive stuff, but um, okay. So let out of the next one. So the next one is Sticky Mint Simpson by Alger. Um, this one was. It wasn't bad or anything. It's just this one page, I think. Well, it's a couple pages. Um, but there's not a lot of words at all. It's pretty much all uh, art. I do love the art. The art was fantastic. The one thing I can say is yeah, it, the English is not all there. Like like in the very beginning, it's it's it says the guy says big plane, but he he spells it b e e g like aeroplane. Um, which isn't, I mean, nothing wrong or anything. I just, I just thought it was kind of interesting that they allowed, like, you know, semi-English to be printed, especially back then for a first issue. Um, but this story is actually about a thief. It's pretty cut and dry. It's about a thief, and it's a cut and, like, cat and mouse thing with this cop following the, you know, thief, and it's pretty much the thief just trying, I mean, at one point, they're, they're, they're going through like pipes you know I mean it's pretty much cartoonish um, but eventually the, the the thief does get away eventually like does this whole disguise and then while he's doing a disguise he actually disguises himself as, as someone that's already there and and the cops end up catching the wrong guy and the cops are like oops uh, you know um, we made a mistake um, it wasn't like I said it wasn't a bad story but it's, it's basically like a Tom and Jerry episode um, Next up, we have The Adventures of Marco Polo, and no writer, um, but it does say illustrated by 711, and no joke, um, 711, and I'll, I'll let you see right here, 711, it's spelled S-V-E-N-E-L-V-E-N. -E -E um, the art was, was okay. Um, the story was absolutely boring. Um, I mean, Marco Polo it is in history, and most of their stuff is, is, I mean, you can go read about it, and this that's pretty much what this was, was like a page out of history, and they just kind of animated it. And this is about Marco Polo heading to China with the, with the, you know, the Pope has given them, you know, the message to spread Christ, and they've sent some priests, and and some gifts along the way and they're supposed to be going to the Orient um, they end up getting like a whole bunch of things they end up getting marooned by another ship and then they end up like making it onto a continent that's way far I mean it's more Middle Eastern than the Orient and then they get attacked by savages and um, it, it's pretty much just a historical piece there's nothing wrong with it in my eye I remember this growing up in the newspaper they always had like Marco Polo and and I think like another like historical like kind of comic strip that they had going I can't remember the other one I do remember Marco Polo I want to say the other one I'm thinking like Armstrong and but, that, but that's a comic I don't know okay um so next up we got Pet Morgan by also Fred Gardner. Uh, Gardner, sorry. Um, 
I'm not a big sports fan, but this was actually a really good story. It was a kind of like, I wouldn't say murder mystery, but it was a mystery like uh, story. It was about Pep Morgan as this, this boxer. It was, you know, he, he's top of his class or something like that. He ends up fighting this other guy who was supposed to be a little less than his class and while he's fighting him, he's ha he temporarily goes blind the first time and come to find out that the doctor that is that is working with the other boxer um, has coated the boxer's hands with some it, they call it laminate but it, I don't know what laminate I mean I know what laminate is nowadays but I don't know what that is back then but but it said laminate and basically it's on his gloves and it's like some kind of blinding agent or whatever it didn't happen right away but it does eventually enough where his trainer does know the trick and basically they accuse the doc and the doc gets, you know, kicked out of boxing for a temporary time. And then we see over here to the, you know, on the next page, the doc has come back. And now he's got this aboriginal fighter that is making his way through the, the top of the chain. Started at the bottom and he's all the way, you know, he's already at the top. <clears throat> about to fight our guy, Pep Morgan. Um, Pep Morgan feels like there's something going on, you know, going on. Especially because it's, it's like he's you know backed by the crooked doctor from before um but basically at this point like that they do go to another match and they um pep morgan and his his trainer they try to you know see if anything's going on during the boxing match they do notice that the other boxer that's fighting um the and the aboriginal's name is boomerang but boomerang <clears throat> they're trying to see if anything's funny during the match they do notice that the other boxer goes down like kinda a lot early than he should have even his trainer was all like man I, there's no way my guy could have taken a dive you know kinda thing um, but basically at this point you know it's like ah, we're just gonna have to fight this guy and see if he tries anything during the fight and finally we do get to that epic you know fight and sure enough like um, Pep Morgan and the boomerang they start fighting Pep Morgan like instantly is 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 on the upper hand versus the boomerang and boomerang is like out the box trying to do dastardly stuff he like tries to to cut his eye using his box uh, his boxing glove and near the end of the near the end of the match Pep starts going like he starts getting a little dizzy and losing control and before he does so he does land a knockout punch to boomerang um the trainer was kind of watching the whole like pep's trainer and he ends up like you know seizing the doctor saying there has to be something wrong so they inspect boomerang's gloves and sure enough they find like a small hypodermic needle when he had tried to you know cut his eye that was actually him poking him with a needle and he doused him with something that was going to make him pass out and that's basically the end of the story um and i think if i'm not mistaken we got two more stories so we got scoop scanalon five-star reporter by will ellie um, this one is the other black and white story that's in the book. This one is about a reporter that he, you know, like it says, a five-star reporter, and it's basically like there's a, a jewel thief that is getting out of like prison and he's being taken to another prison or something like that. Um, and the five-star reporter believes that something is going to go down, and sure enough, like a, a a gang of goons show up to try and break out you know this this jewel thief or whatever um our scoop scallion and his uh, partner um rusty they basically kind of witness the whole like gang show up before they try to break out the jewel thief and they kind of alert the cops like right before they get mowed down um, Rusty does eventually, I mean not Rusty, um, the Jewel Thief does eventually like break away and manages to get in a car. Scoop eventually like grabs a cop, which I thought was the, the funniest thing. He, he starts ordering the cop around. The cop gives him his, his uh, Tommy gun and basically the cop is in pursuit of the Jewel Thief. Rusty actually like hops on another car. Uh, uh, I want to say it's another cop car, but he basically hops on 
back in the day they had the tire wells on the, the outside of the car and uh, I think it's right here yeah he hops on like right here like you know riding the tire well on the outside of the car and basically both Scoop and Rusty are in pursuit um, eventually the car that, that has you know our jewel thief eventually like another truck comes to like pick him up or whatever Scoop eventually with his Tommy gun just just you know starts shooting down and all the thugs and stuff and they eventually run it away um, well, basically they they do end up catching the jewel thief with the cops and scoop, scoop actually does all the all the stuff and, and rusty you know he, he kind of like I mean he does hang in there and he eventually like <laughs> it, it's 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 weird um, but that's basically it they catch the jewel thief rusty and scoop and, and um, I will say that there's a lot of liberties taken like like scoop is just like I mean, he's literally grabbing a Tommy gun from the cop. He literally orders the cop. It's more like a taxi driver kind of thing. I don't, I'm not, I mean, maybe back in 1938, you know, reporters had had more sway than a cop. Not, mm, I don't know. Um, but that was <laughs> scoop. <laughs> okay, so we got our, I think this is, let me make sure. Yeah, I think this is our last one. This is text. Tex Thompson by Bernard Bailey and this was definitely one of the better stories um, it's probably like you know all together third favorite after Superman um, Chuck Dawson but um, this one was basically it's about uh, Tex Thompson and he is like made billions of dollars in the oil back in Texas and now he's traveling the world each each episode is kind of like a, a cut and dry thing where it's it's you know it starts and finishes and each week it'll be something different I presume um, and this episode Tex is in England and Tex is in England and he's just made a new friend named Bobby and they're on a walk and and he's going around a corner and sure enough they spot a dead man um, Tex tells Bobby to go find the cops and sure enough after Bobby leaves we see our dastardly villain kind of pop out and it's this girl over here which I thought was really interesting back in 1938 and they had um, this this twice in the book they had women villains that's pretty cool um, uh, take it for what it is you know I think it's really cool but it might it, it might have been a slander back then I'm not sure um, but I thought it was really interesting that they used women villains um, predominantly, like in two different stories. So we got this woman, you know, this woman, and um, she kind of, and her name is, um, I think her name is Shiva. Um, but she shows up, and she's she's got this whole plan on basically she's gonna, you know, she's gonna pin the murder on Tex. A sheriff shows up out of nowhere. And Tex thinks Bobby, this must be the you know, sheriff that Bobby got, it's not, he just shows up randomly in the woods, but basically the woman starts pleading that this dude, kid, you know, the Tex killed this random guy, and she witnessed the whole thing. The cop kind of believes him, and instantly handcuffs Tex, and Tex has, like, he doesn't want to do it, but he kind of knocks out the cop and eventually escapes. The lady, uh, and again, I think her name is Shiva, but she ends up, like, thinking that Tex is going, you know, to jail for murder. She ends up, like, going back to her hideout. <clears throat> Tex ends up seeing her and following her. We go back to this hideout, <clears throat> and we find out that it's not just Shiva. It's a whole bunch of other goons, and there's, like, this one main guy that set everything in motion or whatever, but come to find out, they have Bobby, and that's why Bobby never returned with the cop. Tex, seeing this, of course, goes into action. Um... A whole bunch of stuff happens. Tex eventually gets knocked out the first time. Um, they they're, should have killed Tex, but for some reason they like tie him up and they do all this weird stuff. He gets loose and gets caught again. Bobby has to eventually come and save Tex. But in the end, after everything is said and done, Tex does put up a, a whopping good fight at the end of it, but after everything is said and done, basically, they, they do end up catching Lady Shiva, ah, Lady Sh and um, all the other criminals. The actual main bad guy actually gets gunned down by the cops because he ends up running away instead of, like, 
you know, but basically they, in the the very end of the story, we find out that there was a reward on the gang, and and basically in in, in badass text fashion, he gives the um, the reward to Bobby and this other little kid that I didn't mention that kind of shows up at the end um, that helps you know tags. It's a little girl. But basically, that's the reviews on all the books. Now, what did I think? It's honestly my honest thought was this is like a a, a comic version of a Reader's Digest. Um, there, there was, I mean, if you minus Superman out of the story, all the other stories were almost like, like if the writers were like, okay, we need superheroes, but they don't need capes, and it was like, how can we make regular people look like? superheroes and honestly it works every every single story I mean we had a magician we had a, a, a kung fu cowboy we had um, minus the one cartoony story in there I want to say that's just for humor but um and you know shits and giggles kind of thing but honestly that's kind of what it felt like it just felt like a collection of different random stories to get you interested and, and honestly a lot of them are really good um, I like the two western ones you know um, I will say, you know, minus the adventures of Marco Polo and the South Sea strategy, uh, honestly, if they would have left those out, this book would have been fire the whole way through. Um, but hey, that is that is my review. Um, I want to thank Ranger Sly for for you know mentioning this that I should have reviewed that in the beginning. That 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 you know, Action Comics: The Origin of Superman has probably been the most reviewed thing ever. Um, so I'm glad he pointed that out to me. I, it, I was not thinking that either. But hey, that's my review. Please like, comment, subscribe. Please comment down below. What would you think about all this stuff? You know, um, Would you pick up Action Comics number two to finish any of these stories? I know I would. Like Chuck Dawson, I really want to kind of see what happens to that story. Especially Zatara. If you know if Zatara, if this does tie into Zatanna, let me know. Um, but hey, that's what I got for you. It's a long video. I'm sorry, guys. It was a lot of stories. I hope I did this justice. Um, I will see y'all guys later. Bye!